Hey guys, what's going on? Steve, I'm back again, and I'm back with another 40k video from Imperial Iterator. Now, I have done one video from the channel in the past, and it was a very good video. So I am looking forward to this video here, which is called Five Demons in the Service of the Imperium. Very interesting. The only demon I can kind of think of is um, St. Celestine. From what I've heard from other videos I've watched, she's kind of like the equivalent of, I don't remember if they said like a greater demon or a demon prince, but she's kind of like the Imperium's version of that. Uh, the Emperor apparently keeps resurrecting her, um, and she shows up at like the most dire of moments. That's that's what I've heard. Uh, but as for... I'm going to say the four others, because I'm guessing she's one of them. I have no idea who they could be. Not a clue. So, let's check out the video and find out who they are. Here we go. That's actually a really badass looking picture, not going to lie. Today you are in for an exciting lecture. That's full of important cool. information about the demons serving the Imperium. Yes, you heard that right. These entities, usually associated with chaos, can actually be among the defenders of the Emperor. Just imagine, the saints you revere may not only be defenders, but also demons. And this is not fiction. Their death is only the beginning of a new stage in their existence, where they gain new power and become part of the great Emperor. Incredible, isn't it? This that story opens up a new perspective on That's the relationship badass. between the Emperor and demons, emphasizing the fact that the great ruler can use their power to his advantage. Isn't it just amazing? Let's start with the first thing that comes to mind when talking about living saints, Celestine. In a later okay, life, so she was a sister repentia of the Order of Our Martyred Lady, and she was but one warrior fighting at the prolonged Palatine Schism against thousands of heretics. Okay. Celestine was in the first wave of attackers, slaughtering heretics left and right, giving her sisters confidence in victory. She okay. died there, as did the rest of Sister Repentia. Oh. Celestine's mangled body was extracted from under the wreckage and placed with the fallen, but suddenly one of the sisters discovered that Saint Celestine was still alive. Not oh. just alive, she was resurrected by the divine will of the Emperor. Her body was cleansed, she was given a new suit, and the next day she was already storming the capital of the heretics, which Damn. this time was captured in just a few hours. Wow. All such, wow, she's a living saint, declared her the symbol of the crusade, which began to cleanse other worlds of heretics. Okay. First of all, Celestine insisted on the purification of the small planet Sanctus Lys, although there were more important goals. But Lord Ansgar, who commanded okay, the that's campaign, another bad aspect, could sure. not refuse the living saint, who already had many followers, and they arrived on the planet. Celestine was interested in the ancient shrine once visited by St. Catherine. She descended into the crypt beneath the altar, while her army waited outside. In the morning, with the first rays of the sun, Celestine emerged from the crypt, floating in a column of divine light surrounded by cherubs. She wore golden armor, and in her hand, she held a sword whose blade shone brightly. Wow. She was declared a living saint by Lord Ansgar and his Thorian compatriots, okay. hailed as the hero martyr of the Palatine Crusade. The Palatine Since then, Crusade. Celestine has participated in many wars inspiring ordinary people and battle sisters to heroic deeds. She destroyed thousands of heretics and, if necessary, could go to the Eye of Terror. Everything would have been really? fine if it hadn't been for one of the traitors commanding Forex, who decided to overload the ancient nuclear reactor in the Citadel and blow everyone up. The explosion destroyed all life for many kilometers around. On that day, the Tower of Heroes on Holy Terror even struck the bell, announcing the great loss. Since Celestine is a demon, she, like all self-respecting demons, walks in the warp. It was there that after many years she discovered the lost Battle Sisters and headed with them to Cadia to help in the war against the Black Legion. Yes, Celestine took part in truly epic events. The fall of Cadia and the resurrection of Rabut Gilliman. Really? And no matter what tries to kill her, she will still come back. 
Wow. Many believe that only battle sisters can be living saints, but this is not entirely true. That's pretty For impressive. For example, militant apostolic Mathieu manifested his powers during the famous Plague Wars of Ultramar. Before attaining his current title, he was a priest of the Acronite Mendicants, a suborder of the Missionara Galactica, but at some point found himself trapped aboard an Ultramarine's flagship in honour of Macragga when his Red Corsairs were captured. As you know, being in the clutches of the foul Chaos forces is not an option. There, yeah. everyone is tortured, tormented, and swayed to the side of chaos. Well, of course. But Mattia was strong and even conducted secret prayers to the Emperor, risking greatly. At some point, Mattia began to understand that Macrage's honor would soon be freed. He seemed to foresee the moment of liberation, even banishing a demon from a child aboard the ship by channeling the Emperor's power into it which clearly indicates that he was no ordinary man. Wow, so When the exorcist. prisoners were freed, which of course happened soon, Mathieu decided to participate in the Indomitus Crusade, where he preached and fought alongside the Astra Militarum. At some point, he was noticed by Ultramarine's Primarch Gilliman, who was precisely seeking a new militant apostolic after the death of the previous one named Gisan. Mathieu, of course, did not immediately accept the title because he considered himself unworthy and simply wanted to do the Emperor's work. However, Gilliman persuaded oh, him, stating that his very uncertainty and other qualities made him the perfect candidate. Thus, Mathieu set off with Gilliman to the realm of Ultramar to participate in the Plague Wars, where, by the way, he wrote a chronicle of the Primarch exploits against Nurgle and his creations. And by the way, he actively preached the fact that the Emperor is actually a god, contrary to Gilman's wishes. Mathieu oh. participated in two key moments of the Plague Wars. On okay. the approach to Parmenio in the warp, he dreamed that the Emperor ordered him to find a girl who would help defeat the forces of Nurgle. This girl with Parmenio became a vessel for the Emperor's spirit and performed many miracles. She purified really? sources of drinking water and halted Mortarian's plague. She became a vessel for the Emperor. So, is she a living saint, you ask? Not quite. According to her, the Emperor simply comes and takes control of her body to help his son. The girl, of course, was immediately taken by the Adeptus Sororitas, who decided to torture her until she confessed to being a servant of Chaos. But when Mathieu <laughs> arrived on the planet, he declared her the avatar of the Emperor's God and persuaded the Adeptus Sororitas to free her so that the girl could help the Primarch. After the melee between loyal forces, Here I am, the girl the, finally the ended up the front line, line, in my body. where Gilliman fought I'm deep. a heretic. <laughs> but Mathieu's main clash occurred at the very end of the Plague Wars, when during the final battle on Ix, Mathieu turned into a true living saint and directed the Emperor's power at the Cauldron of Kugath, destroying him. This, by the way, was an important thing for the invasion of Nurgle. Oh, yeah. Kugath, Kugath? defended it very strongly. Mathieu, of course, eventually died, but before oh. his death he met Gilliman in orbit, convincing him that the Emperor is awakening. I want to note that Gilliman is very strict when it comes to faith in the Emperor, but after Mathieu, he indeed began to question his previous beliefs, and when he was resurrected on IAX, everything became even more strange. So why is the girl not a living saint, but Mathieu is? Again, I say, the girl is just a vessel for the Emperor. Right. And living saints possess part of his power. Right. So don't be surprised if this Mathieu shows up somewhere again. Yeah, the girl it is, is just worth a, noting that living saints a, even appeared during the, the Great The lucky body Crusade. that the Emperor takes possession of One of them was Euphrates Keeler, an imagist of some renown, while attached to the 63rd Expeditionary Force under the command of Warmaster Horus. Her life was quite interesting, but she was shaken by an encounter with the demon Samus in the Whisperheads, which killed the entire group except for herself and Kirill Sinderman. This experience may have contributed to her eventual joining of the Lectitio Divinitatus, a cult that worshipped the Emperor of Mankind as a deity. Due to this encounter, Euphrati grew in strength. Her devotion to the Emperor became clear when Kirill Sinderman accidentally summoned a demon using the Book of Lorgar in the library of Warmaster Horus's flagship, the Vengeful Spirit, as uh -oh. she stood before the beast and banished it back into the warp. She went into a state Impressive. of what could be described as catatonia. The word went out throughout the 63rd expedition, 
leading the Divinitatis members to see her as the saint, the venerated prophet of the emperor. She managed to avoid death on Istvan and subsequent purges on the fleet by escaping with Nathaniel Garrow on the frigate Eisenstein. Wow. During this flight, Euphrates became even stronger and was able to provide protection against demons attacking the ship from the warp. Upon arrival on Earth's moon, the Silent Sisterhood believed that Keela might actually have been a renegade psyker. She was taken to their monastery fortress on the moon wow. and interrogated, but in uh, the end course. she was not seen in any rapids. And already at this time, Euphrates began to significantly influence the Empire. Ordinary people more and more often called her a saint, and Euphrates herself spread the Lectitio Divinitatis right on terror, and millions of adepts followed her. Horus was so enraged by this arrangement that he ordered Vindicar's assassin, Eristedi Kell, to kill her. Really? If it weren't for Garrow, Euphrates would probably have been killed. But who will kill her if Garrow is around? That's true. After this assassination attempt, Malkador the Sigilite took her under personal protection. Well, oh. of course he wanted to use her as a weapon. The old man is not a fool, especially since she knew how to do different things. Well, sending demons to the warp, mm -hmm. foreseeing the future, spontaneously healing wounds. I mean, that is a pretty powerful Euphrates weapon. Euphrates at some point gained access to warp powers, like all living saints. At the end of the Horus heresy, and no one, by the way, knows what ultimately happened to her, Euphrates was canonized oh. as a saint. Immediately after the creation of the Adeptus so Ministorum, she's missing and or the announcement of the new religion of the Imperial Creed. Unknown whereabouts. At some point before the start of the heresy, Euphrates Keeler took several photographs of a comet above the planet Elphenor. The comet was later named the Keeler Comet. It is important to note that the comet was named after Saint Euphrates Keeler, the prophet of the Emperor. Another living saint of the Imperium became the regimental preacher of the 4,021st Armoured Regiment Colonel Odramaya during the Plague Wars. He yeah, was known as Otis. Any of these characters. The regiment stood in the vanguard sent to defend the worlds of Ultramar until Gilliman arrived. At this time, on the planet Parmenio, Death Guard and Nurgle's demons slowly poisoned the surroundings, causing various diseases to flare up. One of the most common Nurgle diseases is the Zombie Plague, resulting in the dead inhabitants of Parmenio rising from their graves and attacking the armoured regiment and other armed forces. Ugh. This continued for two months while the Lord Commander two attempted to months? arrive. Wow. At the moment when Gilliman was almost landing on the planet with his forces, the 4,021st Regiment was on the brink. Huge crowds of plague zombies were climbing over them. Moreover, they would have been destroyed if Preacher Othis had not suddenly begun to preach the Imperial Creed right in the midst of battle. He chanted hymns cool. of Cadia and moved forward into the undead horde. Of course, soon thousands of zombies surrounded him, but his voice was so powerful that the zombies faltered. Any creature that approached oh, wow. Odramaya fell dead. Seeing this turn of events, the soldiers of the regiment were encouraged. The colonel even decided that the emperor had descended onto the battlefield to save the regiment. But Othis was not a vessel of the emperor. He had received part of his power. In short, the colonel decided to take advantage of the moment and ordered his forces to attack the zombies to finally deal with them while they were weakened. Bursting into the ranks of the undead, the soldiers of the regiment found that the colonel was still advancing into the depths of the zombie sea, raising That's the sacred crazy. sign of the Inquisition. When he reached deeper, a powerful explosion occurred. Oh. And a huge column of sacred fire appeared, rising into the he sky, himself? turning thousands of zombies into ashes. In this column appeared a giant in golden armor, who cleansed the land and sky from Nurgle's corruption. There could be no doubt that a particle of the Emperor had helped a simple armored regiment from Cadia. That's pretty when, cool. When, by the way, the commander That's and logisticians impressive. of Lord Gilliman flew to the planet, they paid no attention during the tales of Othis's miracle. The only one who became interested was militant Apostle Mathieu, who managed to get the 4,021st Regiment to join their crusade. By the way, there remained a huge black circle at the place of Othis, filled with the ashes of the plague zombies. He himself disappeared, but he may well appear in the warp after some time. One of the greatest living saints in history has always been St. Sabbat. She is described as a short girl with green eyes and short black hair. Don't know this one either. I Very don't know beautiful. any of these. 
Beati Sabat was born into a shepherd's family on the Agri world of Hagia, in the Segmentum Pacificus, in one of the future Sabat worlds. This region was annexed to the Imperium quite late in the 35th millennium, but the local residents gladly accepted the Emperor's faith and all the blessings of the Imperium. The Imperium created a foothold in this region and began to watch what was happening around. And this was quite a dangerous region. There was always something for the local Arbites and the Imperial Guard to do. What did Sabat do in her childhood? She grew food, walked and lived a normal life. Although okay. no, there was something unusual about her. From childhood she wanted to unite humanity and free the entire region from all kinds of riffraff. Beati Sabat, claiming she had a vision from the Emperor, decided to organise a crusade to bring the worlds to agreement and began to gather around her many That's pretty followers. cool that she organised the crusade. And it eventually happened. Yes, she was a very persistent woman. The crusade lasted for 105 years. Wow. And during this time, she not only brought the regions years. under the control of the Imperium, but also achieved more than many Lord General's militants. In the process, of course, Sabat's wise teachings spread everywhere, and faith in the Emperor strengthened. At some point, the living Sabbat began to be considered the coolest strategy of the Imperial Guard of those years, say, Lord Chiodrus, who was eventually also canonized as a saint. Yes, and not only he, everyone trusted her. And in Sabbat's host, which undoubtedly could be considered crusading, there were white scars and brazen skulls astartes, as well as a command of sisters militant, colonial regiments and pilgrim retinues. When Sabbat died, the world's completely passed under the control of the Imperium. Somewhere, of course, rebellions still flared up, but they were quickly dealt with. Saint Sabat died a martyr on the world of Harkalon, receiving nine sacred wounds. Oof. The White Scars took her body and returned it to her native Hagia, where she was buried in a mausoleum. Oh. Later, Sabat was of course, of them. appeared again. It happened in the 41st millennium during the Imperial Crusade against the forces of chaos in Sabbat worlds. Then she reincarnated as a girl named Eshuli, still from Hagia, and led Imperial forces to the planet Herador, joining the Crusade. These were the great years of the Imperium. Sabbat okay, is still so highly reincarnated revered in the Imperium, and especially by the Sisters of Battle. Did it again. And if anything, she will always come to the rescue, reincarnating in some girl to protect her native worlds. That's the kind of list of the Imperium's demons turned out. Living That's saints, guarding cool. ordinary people, and always ready to help. Oh, okay. Abrupt ending. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was, uh, um, yeah, that was very cool. I didn't know any of those other ones aside from uh, Celestine. That's the only one I knew. Uh, unfortunately, all the others I did not. But yeah, Celestine, extremely impressive. That is pretty cool. Interesting story on her and stuff like that. Uh, I guess if you do, you know, enough good deeds or enough, um, I don't know, killing in the Emperor's name, Emperor takes notice, you know? Uh, so that's pretty cool that, you know, she reincarnates and stuff like that. And yeah, she's basically like the Imperium's demon prince. Uh, this one here was pretty interesting as well, uh, you know, having the girl as a, um, you know, a vessel uh, for the, you know, for the emperor, basically, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't really know about, like, demons and stuff like that, you know, it's just, I don't know, demon just seems like a... I don't know, funny word to use for it. Yep, and there's the girl. Allegedly. The spirit. Um, and performed many miracles. She purified sources of drinking water. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is kind of demonic. So, is she a living saint, you ask? Not quite. Yeah, no. According to her, a... the Emperor simply comes and takes control of her body. To Which is still pretty cool that the Emperor can actually do something like that. You know, just take control of you know, someone's body and perform all these miracles and stuff like that. Pretty badass. Um, the girl, of yeah. course, was immediately taken by the Adeptus Sororitas 
who decided to torture her until that's she kind of shitty of chaos. But when you that serve chaos the planet, no he declared her the avatar of the emperor's god and persuaded uh, the there you go i am the avatar of the emperor which is so, which i'm sure would probably even raise more questions like hmm, you're the avatar of the emperor sure sure you are you know that 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 sounds definitely like some heresy right there um but yeah i mean that you know aside from um you know aside from that that's pretty cool that like i said the emperor can um uh, have her you know be its vassal and and perform all these different miracles and stuff like that that the girl could help the primarch um, after the deed began to question his previous but which other ones warmaster horus Prati grew in strength yeah that one wasn't too bad to either became clear when Kirill Sinderman accidentally summoned a demon. I mean, no, no, this one wasn't, I guess, in the library of War Master too Factory. impressive, I guess. Uh, I'm very curious, who is death? that, though? I've seen this picture many times. Who is that? I think I've heard... I mean, I've seen it before, I just don't remember who that is. But you kind of figured that would be, like, another demon you know um but yeah all the other ones were pretty interesting and stuff like that uh you know this one right here as well um called her a saint and euphrati herself spread the yeah euphrati divinitatis right on terror yeah and millions of adepts for because uh, all of her different powers and stuff like that well of that. course he wanted to use her as a yeah. weapon the yeah. old man is not a fool especially since she knew how to do different things sending demons to the warp foreseeing the future spontaneously healing wounds yeah i mean see i don't know if that's really a demon I don't know, it feels so weird saying demon when you talk about the Imperium and stuff like that, you know? Banishing demons and stuff like that. I'm sure, you know, really strong psychers and stuff like that. You know, healing wounds, you know, if you get strong enough faith in the Emperor, you know, stuff like that can happen. I don't know, it just doesn't feel like... I don't know, it just doesn't feel like enough, or, or, or much, really. I don't know, but that's just me. But, um... Yeah, I mean, these were uh, pretty cool. Most of them were missing and and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, overall, this was a pretty cool video, learning, you know, all about most of, like, all these saints and stuff like that, really, which I'm not surprised, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm just really not sure what else to really say or think about the video, you know, just hearing about... I don't know, demons just sounds funny, like they don't have, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to, what to say, like, you know, because I said before, you know, oh, this, you know, this character can banish demons and stuff and heal wounds, it's like, well, it doesn't seem it's that impressive, I don't know, I don't know, that's just me. You know, I'm kind of on a blank for really what to think about, uh, what to think about this, really, you know? I don't know, that's just me. I'm just at a loss of words, and, and, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just drawing a blank. But anyways, uh, let me know, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you think about these, uh, five quote-unquote demons in the service of the Imperium? Do you really consider them, you know, demons, or are they just more... See, I don't, I don't even know what to, like, call them, you know? I mean, Celestine I kind of consider to be, you know, like a demon, resurrecting, um, you know, and apparently can go into the warp and stuff like that. Um, you know that's really the only the only one but you know let me know what you guys think do you guys consider them you know demons quote unquote are they just you know regular people with better abilities if you will you know i don't know well, let me know what you guys think or maybe 
was there more to each of these characters and stuff like that that you know information was left out or something like that or you know didn't really go into enough detail um yeah well, let me know let me know all your thoughts and comments um do you agree with this uh i guess with this list do you think there's others out there that should be on this list and who was that um that other character from earlier that i've seen yeah this one here who's that you know i've, I've seen that picture many times before um yeah let me know who that is but um yeah aside from me just had a, a loss of words um I don't know. But yeah, so anyways, other than that, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. That'd be awesome. Remember, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. Links in the description box below. And like I said, leave me all your thoughts and comments. What do you guys think about the video? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what do you think about the list and stuff like that? Do you agree with it? Disagree? Uh, do you consider them demons or just, you know, more, more advanced, you know, people and stuff like that you know i don't know let me know and of course if there's any videos you guys want me to check out uh leave a link down below in the comment section or you can jump over to discord and let me know over there because i'm always hanging out on discord and i'll be glad to check out uh you know the videos so other than that just stick around more videos are on the way and i will see you guys next time